Hi, welcome back to the show. Today we have with us Sarinda Garrell from Ath Elite Basketball Academy. He has this academy that works with youth and empowers them and working with different programs to help uh, get them over their hardships. Let's welcome Sarinda Garrell. Welcome to the show, Sarinda. Hi, Anita. Thank you so much for having me on the show. Awesome. Can you tell us, um, so what, why basketball? Usually it's soccer. Uh, from a young age, mm -hmm. I was always athletic and um, I was always into sports and just being around kids. Okay. I initially started out doing track and field. Uh, anything to do with sports or being around kids, I was, mm -hmm. I was into. So uh, when I transferred elementary schools, mm -hmm. the new kids were all playing basketball. Mm -hmm. And that was the trend at the time. And um, that's how I sort of got into basketball and enjoying the game. Awesome. Yeah. So can you tell us a little bit about your academy? What, how was Athlete born? Um, Athlete initially started in 2007. Okay. Uh, we did do some, my partner and I, uh, Amin Heron, um, mm -hmm. we did some basketball camps earlier on in 2003. Okay. Um, and officially opened in 2007. Um, we've been, since 2007, we've been doing coaching um, and different types of mentorship with uh, kids in Surrey, Vancouver, basically all over the Lower Mainland and, uh, and the uh, Fraser Valley. Okay, so when you say mentorship, can you tell us what kind of mentorship that you provide for these youth? Uh, we use basketball basically to teach life. Um, okay. Anything from teaching uh, leadership skills, communication skills, how to work within a team, okay. um, working together, um, perseverance, discipline, all some of the main criteria that you need mm -hmm, to, uh, to succeed in life is sort of what we want to disguise through basketball. That is very neat. So how exactly do you disguise it? Like, what is your clientele? Do you usually have um, South Asian, Caucasian? Like, is it diverse? Like, what kind of clientele do you guys get? Uh, growing up in Surrey, born and raised, um, yes. initially our population has been um, mainly Indo-Canadian. Um, okay. Over the last three, four years, we've broadened and, and honestly, uh, we have all different types of cultures, all awesome. different schools and locations uh, from all over BC. So you guys are quite diverse. We are. We're actually the largest basketball academy. Uh, we have uh, close to a thousand kids right now. Oh um, wow, that's amazing. Yeah. So when you have these youth that come into your academy, are they youth that are struggling or are they normally straight A students? Like what is, um, what are some of the issues that these youth are dealing with? Um, we have a combination of both. Mm -hmm. um, typically with our summer programming, our, some of our more elite athletes have okay. had sort of that parental support from a young age. Okay. Um, so they're succeeding academically and also athletically. Awesome. Um, okay. But one of the things that I wanted to make sure was that we didn't focus just on the elite athlete. We wanted to cater our academy to everyone. Um, unfortunately, less yeah. than 0.1% of, of basketball players will become professional athletes. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a very small number, and I, I'd rather work with the 99.9%. Um, awesome. So we've reached out to Surrey Safe Schools. Uh, we've re reached out to community, uh, community schools partnerships. Okay. Um, both are um, programs run by the Surrey School District where okay. we volunteer our time. Uh, okay. So at-risk youth. We take on a few kids every summer um, who we don't charge, um, and they are able to experience uh, what it would feel like to, to kind of be a part of the, uh, the summer club experience. Um, and in terms of community schools partnerships, mm -hmm. we uh, volunteer and do free camps sort of in the underprivileged areas um, in, in Surrey. I think that's great, because usually we focus on like the elite people when it comes to sports, but I think it's great that you're actually incorporating everybody which kind of gives them the opportunity to learn and grow so i want to kind of go back to your mentorship so how do you exactly when you say leadership skills can you define like what kind of things you do how do you encourage them to become leaders um as natural as as we can do it uh, mm -hmm. we tr don't try to push things i mean it started for me 20 years ago um, when i came across uh, a really amazing human being uh, my high, junior high coach Okay. Uh, Mr. Hardeep Sidhu, he still coaches actually and teaches awesome. um, at, at Johnson Heights. So okay. um, he was uh, my math teacher, he was my coach. He, he now, up yeah. till this day, 20 years later, he's my mentor and lifelong friend. Wow. Um, so he opened up uh, sort of his life to us um, and all the kids on that team surprisingly went off. Um, the five or six of us became lifelong friends. We all got university degrees. Nice. I was the only one that actually played university basketball, but Wow. Everyone became successful in their own fields. Um, so I just, by example, 
um, the, the example that he sort of set for us yes. is sort of what I try to do is just be a good person, mm -hmm. uh, lead by example. Um, exactly, which we forget, right? To lead by example and give back. Yeah. Um, so I wanted to ask you, living in Surrey, so we have quite a diverse group. We have, um, just within the South Asian community, we have youth that are born and raised here, and then we have like the new immigrant youth. Um, how do you cater to them and how do you support them and empower them? Um, initially, when we started our basketball academy, mm -hmm. um, we actually did something unique that no other academy did. Uh, all of our road trips throughout the summer mm -hmm. were, um, we used to have a charter bus system because we knew, understood that in the Indo-Canadian community, a lot of the parents work evening jobs. Yes. Uh, they work hard to provide financially for their families, um, but Western culture doesn't allow you uh, to succeed in that sense. Um, you yes. need that parental support, friend support, yeah. uh, coaches support. So we used to charter the kids and provide hotel service, um, uh, travel, everything mm -hmm. was included. Now we're slowly trying to educate our parents that are new to the country mm -hmm. to move away from that and try to get as involved as they can in their, uh, in their kids' life mm -hmm. um, and, and really be there for them because it's, it's important sort of in the Western yes. culture. It's, it's huge. So it's good to mix it. It's so true. When your parents are involved, it does make a difference in how you are grown up. Well, that concludes our um, interview today. Thank you for coming on our show. Thank you for having me.